Hello and a very warm welcome to another special edition of Middle East Matters, another week of coverage from the region which has now reported over 100,000 cases of coronavirus. Coming up on our program, Iran's battle against COVID-19, authorities reject humanitarian aid, yet slam US sanctions. We bring you a report on artists urging action against those punitive measures. Coronavirus in Gaza. Local residents concerned about their fragile health system and social distancing send us testimonials from the closed-off enclave. Plus, with Lebanon's economy in recession, job losses and confinement, calls to a mental health hotline are surging. Thank you so much for watching. We start this week's program in Iran the worst affected country in the Middle East, which is grappling with tens of thousands of COVID-19 cases. Now, in the earlier stages of the pandemic, authorities in the Islamic Republic refrained from implementing a full lockdown. Weeks later, despite warnings from health experts, they've announced the resumption of economic activities, which could bring on a second wave of the pandemic. This after the Nuru's holidays. That's the Persian New Year, with Iranians pouring back into the streets and traffic building up. Let's now take a listen to President Hassan Rouhani speaking on April the 5th. اما در بحث کسب و کارهای کم ریسک و فعالیت کسبه و فعالیت های اقتصادی که ما به اون میگیم پر ریسک نیست بنا شد در استان ها از شنبه 23 یک فعالیت خودشون رو آغاز بکنن با مراعات پروتکل هایی که به Staying with Iran, authorities have been pointing the finger at U.S. sanctions for hampering Tehran's efforts to curb the coronavirus outbreak. These punitive measures limit banking activities, which in turn place restrictions on the import of certain goods, including medical supplies. However, separately, the country's highest power, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, rejected offers from Washington of humanitarian assistance. Earlier in the week, he did approve the withdrawal of 1 billion euros from Iran's sovereign wealth fund to fight the epidemic. Now, France 24's uh, Tehran correspondent Reza Saya brings us a report from the capital where various artists have joined a growing number of voices calling on the Trump administration to lift those sanctions. <laughs> In the 1985 Iranian puppet film, City of Mice, legendary director Marzia Burumand tells the story of mice under attack by a nasty black cat. Iranians who grew up with the film still view the black cat as the enemy. But during Iran's current health crisis, Burumand says Iranians have a real-life enemy in U.S. President Donald Trump. <laughs> Buruman is among hundreds of Iranian artists who have signed this open letter condemning the Trump administration's sanctions against Iran. Veteran Iranian film producer Fereshtah de Tahirpur wrote the letter that claims sanctions hamper Iran's efforts to contain the coronavirus outbreak. We are all facing corona, and Iran and some other countries are facing corona plus sanction. It's not fair. It's not fair at all. Officials in Iran's health sector say sanctions have indeed made it difficult to import much needed supplies. Mutasafane asar ke mizaram ba har man niyazay ziyadi be daru darim. Umidvaram ke yani ye komaki beshe ke in tahrim ab ardoshte beshe. At this Tehran pharmacy, the lead pharmacist says sanctions have made it impossible to purchase vital medicines. Yani tahrim hoy ke emruz gozoshan halo amdeko baram gozoshte. بدون شک اون چیزی که اتفاقات مردم دارن در واقع تاوان این داستان رو میدن و قشر ضعیف جامعه هستش Ashkan Khatibi is an actor and musician whose message of hope in his latest music video went viral during the outbreak Khatibi didn't join his fellow artists in signing the letter because in his view politicians rarely listen Politicians are all the same all around the world I don't remember a good politician man Hatibi says his role is to stay away from politics and instead use his music to remind Iranians to protect themselves with proper hygiene and remain hopeful that this pandemic will eventually end.
Moving on to Gaza, one of the world's most densely populated and impoverished places. The enclave has been under an Israeli blockade for 13 years. Today, it's bracing for the COVID-19 pandemic, which threatens its failing economy, fragile healthcare system and two million strong population. Over the past days, local residents have been sending me their testimonials speaking about their fears and concerns. Now remember, this is a population that's already dealing with daily interruptions of electricity, as well as water and food shortages. We're stuck with this whole quarantine thing because we can't leave. So here in Palestine, we only get electricity eight hours a day. So we barely do anything. So to waste our time, you know, we go out for walks, we visit families around the area. We drink tea outside, we cook. But here it's really hard because jobs, money, it's it's really bad. So people are people are are struggling with this whole quarantine thing. My family and I are committed to quarantine, full hygiene and social distance, but here in Gaza it's very difficult to apply it because we have overpopulation where two million people live on an area of 360 square kilometers. Also, most of the people here live in a very small apartments. My son has not visited his grandparents since the beginning of the crisis, and this affected him strongly. But I tried to entertain him at home through playing and let him communicate with him through video calls. My name is Diyad Dean. I am 26 years old. I live in Gaza Strip. You know, we have difficult situation in all over the world because of coronavirus. But the most uh, difficult uh, in Gaza, especially because of blockade and lack of hospitals and the treatments. So I will tell you what we're trying to do in our homes to stay in our homes. Uh, for example, I will tell you about myself. I play um, bodybuilding two hours every morning. After that, I watch movies if I have electricity because you know we don't have electricity every time because of blockade. People here in Gaza are aware of the serious consequences of coronavirus due to the fact that um, Gaza is a small place which would be a vulnerable target for such disease. So if this virus has spread, it would be a disaster and Gaza would collapse, I think. Um, although that our government has ruled a quarantine and uh, all the places are closed, people here are still hanging out and going outside because they believe that it's the only hope to see life and to live their lives. There are more than 2 million people living in here under God knows what circumstances, lack of food, lack of many things. And some of us have only one source to live from. So besides the lockdown, Israel is preventing supplies from entering Gaza Strip, such as food, medical equipment, medicine, tests for the virus. This is inhumane. We are in a quarantine now, but we are feeling also so worried and so depressed from the future and from the coming days. What if coronavirus entered Gaza? There is will be a big disaster here. Many people are gonna die. Many, many people actually in lack for medication, for food, for everything here. Gaza has been isolated for over 13 years old and the situation is very worse. We wish a speed recovery for the world and we hope the humanity gonna beat this virus, COVID-19. Much love, much peace from Gaza Strip. In Lebanon, with most people trapped indoors, some are reduced to working remotely, while others have lost their jobs. The country's economic paralysis, which started long before the coronavirus pandemic, has worsened, putting people's mental health to the test. So today, Lebanon's only hotline for psychological support is inundated with calls. Here's a report from our team on the ground. Since the coronavirus pandemic broke out in Lebanon, psychological support hotline Embrace has seen an unprecedented influx of calls. Bassem and other volunteers face people's growing anxiety over the disease, which is heightened by concerns over the country's worsening economic crisis. هلا مينلي عم بيكونوا الاتصالات مركزين على الستريس اللي عم بيصير من الكورونا 
والسترس سببه في كثير اسباب منها عم تكون اسباب ماديه ومنها عم تكون اسباب لانه اصلا نحن بمطرح بطلنا عارفين وين رايحين قبل كان اتصالات من كل جب... اذا بدك شرائح المجتمع اكثر شيء مراهقين هلا صار اكثر الناس اللي عندها عيال عندها اولاد عتلاني هم وبطل في عندها مدخول The center usually receives 10 calls a day but recently this has jumped to 100 calls For Michelle Daher a psychiatrist at the Embrace Association the increase is clearly connected to events in the country بالكول سنتر اخر فتره لاحظنا في زياده ملحوظه بالكميه الاتصالات اللي عم تجي وصار عندنا اثنين بيك مرتين زادوا الاتصالات كثير اول مره من بعد الثوره وبعد 17 تشرين بكم اسبوع وقت العالم بلشت تزيد القلق تبعها على الضائقه الاقتصاديه اللي عم بتصير عنا وهلا من بعد ما صار حظر التجول والإجراءات اللي أخذتها الدولة والعالم قعدت ببيوتها. Lebanese citizens say the combination of the pandemic and the economic crisis are causing serious suffering. كآبي والقضية الاقتصاد والكورونا نفسية كل عام تعبت وعم هالخوف هذا اللي عم يصير عم يأثر على نفسيتهم كلها. قضية اللي قاعدين بالبيت بلا شغل واللي بيعيش بيقوت يومه يعني ما قادر ما قادر يعمل شيء. After imposing an isolation order until the end of March, the authorities have now extended the move into April. In the meantime, life is slowing down. Lebanese are learning to cope with the restrictions while waiting for the pandemic to end. Well, that's it for me and the team this week. Thank you so much for watching Middle East Matters and do stay safe.